Greetings and salutations, men, women, and children of all ages. Welcome into No One Asked Us. Episode 71, Season 2, Episode 9 of Season 2. He's Craig, I'm Logan. Welcome in. We got a lot to talk about this week. Uh, busy day, crazy day in the NFL. Uh, interesting day in college football on Saturday. Uh, some things going around in Major League Baseball we're going to touch on. Uh, a whole host of things. So Craig and I are here, excited to do it. Uh, don't forget, real quick, give us a follow at No One Asks This Pod. He's at Craig W. Choate. I'm at the Logan Lee. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Trying to get those numbers up. Also, subscribe. Um, our subscribe subscribers subscription numbers uh, kind of uh, haven't really moved lately. So if you're out there watching this show on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you're out there listening to us on Spotify or Apple. Head over to our YouTube page. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, really would be appreciative. I know Craig is really pushing for the Logan Lee mullet. Um, yes. But uh, we'll have I, to see. I we're we're some... quite a ways away from there. Yes. We are like 820 away from there. I did some research. Oh. 40% of people that watch this are not subscribed. 40%? 40% of you. What Just the hit heck? The subscribe button. Just hit the button. That's all you got to do. What the... We're not even asking you to hit the notifications button. That's a whole nother level. We just want you to subscribe. That's all. Yes, please. Uh, wherever you are, wherever you're watching, head over to our YouTube page. Hit that subscribe button. Those numbers will help us out, and they go a long way. Craig, what's up, man? How are you on this Monday evening? You good? Great. See, you're repping your Saluki Maroon. Can't wait to talk Big about win. that. Big win. Big win. Big we'll win. First win on the season comes in week three <laughs> at Northwestern. Uh, that was that was nice. Nice win for the Salukis. Interesting weekend for Saluki sports. A uh, couple things we're going to talk about. Um, Carbondale related things too. I kind of want to chime in on. Um, so we got we got, a few, got a few things. Got a few things. So everything good though. You life life good. Good weekend. We're here. I saw, you, saw you're out on the links. Did you hit them yeah. straight? Yeah, uh, I played well. I didn't hit the ball great, but the results were pretty good. Um, didn't hit the ball my best, but uh, the score was pretty good. So, so yeah, it was a it's pretty relaxed, pretty good. I mean, really couldn't ask for a better weekend. Football yeah. Friday night in Louisville. Football all day Saturday <laughs> on my couch. Football and golf on Sunday from my couch and on the golf course. So, um, really can't complain. That's great. I wouldn't want you to complain. I, I wouldn't listen to you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's I, normally what I do. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. You do a lot of that. I did a little putt putt golfing on Sunday. Um, probably, you know, it's not real golf. <laughs> okay. Hold on. What? It's, it's golf. I had a golf club. I had a putter. I had a golf ball. I was aiming towards little holes. Why is that not golf? There's no uh, hazards. I guess there are a lot of hazards in putt All right. I didn't know this was an argument we were going to have. So whatever. <laughs> we're going to move on. Apparently, what I did is not real golf. Uh, maybe that should be our question of the week. That's going to be our question of the week. We're going to call <laughs> it on more right now. Is putt-putt golf real golf? Yes or no? That's it. That's the question. <laughs> that is our what do you think? I was gonna. We were going to go somewhere else, but now Craig has spiked this conversation up. So here we go. Is putt putt or mini golf real golf? Yes or no? That is our what do you think for this week? I know Craig's answer, but I want to hear the people's answer. So there you go. Craig went golfing. I went putt putt golfing. So we're gonna we're gonna fi figure it out right here, right now. Have more than one club to can be considered golf. Okay, we're not gonna. Nope, this is over. It's, that's the question. That is our what do you think this week? <laughs> we'll cut your eye this week though. We'll skip. We'll skip back to that. Uh, anything exciting from the past seven days that caught your eye? You should know where this is going. I don't know where this is going. The greatest catcher of our time and one of the top pitchers of our time. Jason Kendall? Broke, broke a, uh, <laughs> set an unbreakable record. 325 career starts for Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina is just absolutely insane. It's pretty incredible. Like, can you, you can't put that into context. It It's no. unbelievable. Unbelievable. The night that it was that they were pitching, I forgot what night it was. I looked up the list. 
and the next closest person or duo that pitched in the 90s was at like 240. Like everyone else on the list was from like the 1940s and 1960s. Like I think only two tandems in the list top 25 were even pitched in the 2000s and they were at like 210. One of them was Cole Hamels and Carlos Ruiz. I don't know who the other one was, but unbreakable record 325. Um, I'm trying to think of how many I might have seen. I I saw one two weeks ago, like in the person. Game, yeah, the game me and Dad went to. That was Wayno and Yadi. I I would say I got a handful of those. I think that's a pretty good number. I think I've seen yeah. Adam Wainwright pitch five five six times. Actually, <laughs> twice this year, because he pitched in Cincinnati when I went and um went and watched the Cardinals play the Reds in Cincinnati back in May. So I saw two this year, but. That's the best moment of the week of the year. Lock of the century of the week. So you're going that over Albert Pujols continuing to hit bombs. He hasn't hit and 700 yet. When 700 happens, okay. that might be the moment of the week I of the year. Of the century. I still can't believe we're having this discussion. <laughs> I, I, I'm flabbergasted. Have you asked me back in March if – well, we talked about it. I'm pretty sure we yeah. said no chance. Yeah, that Albert Pujols gets to 700. I didn't think he'd be on the Cardinals roster uh, by the All-Star break. And here we are. He is still hitting dingers, not only against left-handed pitching. He's hitting dingers against right-handed pitching. Um, yeah, uh, you did send me the text asking me if, in my opinion, if Adam Wainwright is a Hall of Famer, um, which it's certainly it's certainly up for debate. That's a debate. That's a huge debate. It's even I even I'm on the fence on that one. Yeah, it's it's certainly it's more it is more of a debate than the Yadier Molina discussion. Uh I like no, to the, the I Yachty like to bring up the Yadier discussion. Ballot. Yes, that That's is a, a fair debate. argument. Sure. I think the Yachty thing is just fascinating anyway. But uh yeah, it's pretty incredible what they've done as a tandem. Um yeah, certainly two of the best to ever do it, especially in our generation. So yeah, very cool for them. Um, I had a few things I was going to talk about for this, for the, what caught my eye this week, but something that was re brought up to my attention just a few hours ago uh, that I just kind of want to pour one out for um, the Carbondale Denny's is officially gone. Did you ever go to Denny's in Carbondale, Craig? I can't even tell you where it is, where it was. Hold it on. Was out Let me think. On... Let me think. I had was, was it out, out towards Murfreesboro. Yes. Yeah. It was out on the okay. West end of town. It was near okay. family video or West yeah. of family video. Yeah. The only reason it, I bring it up because in that town, there weren't a lot of places to go in the middle of the night to yeah. like, you know, eat or, you know, just hang out like that. It was pretty much Denny's and steak and shake, um, you know, after you went out to the bars or whatever, you know, uh, so spent many a nights, uh the carbondale denny's and it's it's officially gone like that town man um it's terrible just pinch and now denny's like what's next chilies if you get rid of the chilies and the b-dubs i mean my entire college i mean is gone so best buy is not there anymore <sighs> best buy and carbondale closed down macy's it's and carbondale real closed shame. down it's a real the mall shame. has like three shops left i know it's I haven't been back yeah. in a long time. I'm yeah, sure you good. have, obviously, being from the area. But um, um, we have, we went to a SIU football game last year. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not the same. Yeah, I need to get back get back down there. Sad. Um, let's talk about our Salukis though, real quick, before we get into the Illini stuff. Yeah, um, Southern Illinois football, as we already kind of touched on, went up to Evanston and took down Northwestern. Go dogs! That is an old mascot. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, this is from like the nineties. Big win for the Salukis, huh? Huge, huge. A, that is a very Craig has a little Saluki plush doll that's almost uh, like a beanie baby. Predates my time in Carbondale because I've had uh, the new mascots ever since I was around. Um, that is the old gray dog. Yes. Um, yeah, first win on the season comes at the hands of oh. a of an FBS Big Ten team. Not a very good Big Ten team. No. Um, but uh still pretty pretty nice win for Nick Hill and company to get that this week. Um I there wasn't it mentioned... wasn't an Illinois game this week, so we may as well just go ahead and start with this in the football. Yeah, world, I so. was hoping we would. 
Um, there was a quick mention. Oh, we mentioned. Uh, did we mention Nick last week because he got the extension? We did talk about the extension. Yeah, last and week. And then I was like, "That's all we're going to talk about because they lost to Simo and they got their doors absolutely blown off of them by Incarnate Word in Week One." So I was prepared to not really talk much SIU football this year. It wasn't looking good. <laughs> um, I paid somewhat attention to the Incarnate Word game because that it was the same time as the Cardinal game that I went to on that mm-hmm. Saturday. So I wasn't watching or I was getting the updates on my phone. And um, then on the drive home, I turned on Mike, uh, Mike Reese and Mike Trude. And it was still kind of a game. I think it was like a 10 point game. And then next thing I know, it was a 30 point game. And I was like, all right, this ain't good. And then last week, I watched a lot of it, fully expecting to beat SEMO by 20. And then it was a close game. And the refs bailed SEMO out with three pass interference calls in the fourth quarter. And then they scored with 11 seconds left. Just, just the refs won that game for SEMO. That's how you should have won that game. So I didn't take too much stock into it. Um, but I was fully expected for SIU to start the season 0-3 and, and just kind of have a season where just kind of compete, maybe win one or two Valley games, beat a team you're not supposed to, and build for next year kind of season. And then they go up to Northeast Northwestern and – uh, I bet them plus 14 right at kickoff. I was like, eh, I, th- I, I think that's probably about right, 14 to 17, but I don't get to bet SIU often because they're not on the site that I use. So I'm like, I'll throw, I'll, I'll throw one on there. So, I, I mean, obviously that's what I watched on Saturday on Big Ten Network. I didn't watch any of the other games. and I mean, they were the better team. They yeah. were it, it wasn't a fluke. SIU was the better team on Saturday in Evanston. And that's saying a lot about this team because they started the year 0-2, lost the rivalry game to SEMO, and then a week later you come out and you you beat an FCS team, um, a Big Ten FCS team. So it's massive. It's huge. Um, happy for Nick. I hope they can – I mean, it keeps them in somewhat playoff contention. I think if you start 0-3 or 0-4, I mean, four losses is kind of the cutoff. I think you can go 7-4, and four, and if you have a good resume, get in. But, whoo. Um, Couldn't have happened to a better team too. Northwestern, two teams SIU has beaten as F two FCS teams SIU has beaten are probably the two most hated by Illini fans. Northwestern yeah. and Indiana. So, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good thing. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert for later in the show, though. The crazy thing about this is that Northwestern is not even the worst team in the Big Ten. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Southern was the better team in that game. So uh, who knows? Uh, Southern, you know, we we kind of tossed around a few different uh, questions to start the show. And one of them was, who's the best football team in the state of Illinois? And I mean, whatever. So <laughs> I think we know the answer to that. Well, they I wear orange and blue. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right. So go dogs. Uh, real quickly, though, before we shift to Illinois football, there was some Southern Illinois basketball news that just came out today uh that they have a home we want Barry home and home and home whatever that means or what it's essentially breaking down to with Oklahoma State uh wait Oklahoma State's coming to SIU next year yeah I didn't see that I think so holy cow yeah uh it's it's a three-year series this year will be at Oklahoma State next year will be in Carbondale and the year after that, it'll be at Oklahoma what? State again. Yeah. I mean, that's a Barry Henson move. Like, yeah. that had to be him pulling some strings saying, yeah. hey, let's go to Carbondale. Absolutely. Holy cow, give me tickets right now. <laughs> Barry Henson, uh, I, I looked it up. He's no longer on the staff, uh, the basketball staff. He is now, uh, I believe his title is like associate AD in charge of NIL um okay. at oklahoma state so he's still at oklahoma state um he's still very much involved in the athletic department but he's not specifically on the basketball staff um but still it's just kind of it's just kind of interesting i listened to um reese's half t- half time interview with chris lowry uh lowry is yeah. now an assistant at northwestern so he was on yeah. the the show on the during the game with with reese then and now that this coming out with oklahoma state and the barry henson game so just kind of interesting um whoo i thought that was pretty cool so yeah it'll i be, like it i do believe i think i think that's right it, it's a three game three it season series yeah. yeah 
So this year will be at Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, State. will travel to the Banterra Center 2023-2024. Yeah. So very cool for wow. the for the Salukis. Uh interesting interesting first, couple of days. First Power 5 opponent SIU has hosted since 0708 when Oklahoma State went to Carbondale for the NIT. Mm. And okay. SIU also hosted Indiana for a regular season game that year in non-conference. Very cool. Um, uh, uh, the yeah, other scheduling note there, though. Oh. SAU doesn't play at Belmont this year. I was looking forward to going to Belmont, spending a weekend in Nashville or a day in Nashville and going to SAU Belmont, but that's one game that SAU does not have this year. Well, they do go, to, South- goes- they do go to Southern Indiana, so you can go to that game. They do. <laughs> they also go to Evansville, which I could go to, that's which true. is what I did last year. That's true. <laughs> so – uh, very cool. Go dogs. Um, all right, let's move into Illinois football. Uh, the Illini did not play this week. They had a week three by, um, there was one note, uh, recruitment, uh, of note of the week during the week though. Um, Brett Bielema continues to recruit Illinois based talent. Uh, and he did that again, this time in the form of a, of a punter, the number one punter in the state of Illinois, uh, Declan Dooley is the kid's name. I believe he's from El Paso Gridley. Is that correct? Um, yes. So yes. again, Bielema made a promise when he came to Illinois that there was a lot of talent in the state and he's going to continue to, to bring it in. So um, adding to the special teams, uh, don't know a lot about the kid. He's a punter, um, but still just the fact that he, he's the number one punter in the state and Bielma continues to bring in in-state talent. So uh, it's 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 a nice thing to see, if nothing else. I don't know if, if you know much about this kid at all, but that's no, I you know. It's so tough to react to kicker rankings and news because twenty four seven doesn't spend any time ranking these guys. Yeah. Um, and there are a couple kicking academies that do their rankings, but I'm pretty sure I saw that this kid's like top five or 10 in one ranking, but he's, then he's like 45 in a different ranking. So it's, it's tough to judge. It's one of those things that punters and kickers, you just get them on campus and see who wins the job. Um, Very similar to the NFL right now. You just get someone in and hope they're good. And if they're not, you move on and find someone else. So, um, but like you said, do like that the kid is from Illinois, from central Illinois specifically. um, And it gives Illinois a good one, two punch. I think they got the top ranked, kicker and punter from Illinois. Um, David Alano from the Chicago area is the kicker they got. Now Dooley from um, El Paso Gridley. I saw Joey Wagner was at his game Friday and wrote an article for 24-7 Illini Inquirer um, about about the kids. So it's a good get. It's just it's hard to get excited about right. a punter, but um, very happy that, that they did get one from their backyard, which is a good sign. Punters are people too, Craig. Hunters it does show something too. though that they offered a scholarship. Yeah. Um that's not, not a lot of kickers. Yeah, not a lot of kickers get offered scholarships. And um this isn't a preferred walk on, this isn't a walk on spot. He he got he offered him a scholarship. Yeah. Which tells me Bielma prioritize prioritizes his specialists, especially because Hugh Robertson Robertson has not been fantastic, especially in the Indiana game. So as we said, Illinois was off in week three. They now have what will end up being about a week and a half off uh, because they play Thursday night um, to kick off week four in the Big Ten. Uh, they host Chattanooga out of the FCS, a familiar opponent for Illinois basketball. Um, Chattanooga is a good football program. Uh, 3-0 and on the season. They are, I think, ranked top, t- top 10, I think number nine, I think, in the coaches poll in the FCS. Really? Um, it's a good team. Yeah, it's a good program. 3 and 0 as I said on the season, their wins against Wofford, Eastern Illinois and North Alabama. Um so it it, it won't be <clears throat> it won't be number, a walk in the park. Number 10. Yeah, it won't be a walk SIU in the park. SIU back in there by the way at 24. Yes. Um and that's the I don't know. There's a few different polls out there. I don't know if we're seeing the same thing. But um either way, Chattanooga comes to Champaign on Thursday night. Um, 8.30 kickoff on Big Ten Network, uh, a, a nice Thursday game to, to start the week. Illinois had the week off um, after the win, um, whichever game that was. Um, 
we'll see. I mean, this is, you know, I could totally see a Southern Illinois coming to Northwestern type of scenario. Um, but I think Illinois is going to play better than that. Um, they have, they know what they have. They yeah. have, they have a defense that's been pretty dominant this season. Um, we've already talked about it, talked about it several times on the show, held Virginia to three points. Um, a week and a half ago, week, week ago or whatever it was. Um, I have a hard time thinking that Illinois won't do something very similar to Chattanooga. But as I said, it's a good Chattanooga team for the FCS level. Um, there's a lot of talent there and Illinois is going to, they're going to be up for it. They're going to be up for the challenge. Um, looking to squeak out their third win of the season, which would be a nice, a nice start to the year. If you can start the year three and one, um, it would it would be nice because it's going to get a lot more difficult after this. What needs to happen is Illinois needs to get out to a two or three touchdown lead. This is not a game that you want the opponent to hang around. Yeah, because then that's when things happen. Illinois needs to get points on their first two or three drives, um, whether it be you need, need to score touchdowns, honestly. But a couple touchdowns and a field goal wouldn't be terrible, but get out to a lead and put this team away. Don't let them hang around because that's when you see the FCS over FBS upsets or the group of five upsets over the power fives. Um, get out and, and show that you you are a Big Ten team and this is an FCS team. Um, I looked at FPI yesterday because a couple of the uh, reporters down here were tweeting out the, like, the Louisville FPI and the Kentucky FPI and Indiana and the schools I cover down here. Um, it's the ESPN FPI football percentage index or something. It basically predicts the rest of the games. Guess what it has Illinois finishing right now, record-wise? Mm. Ranks them as the 57th best team in the country. The fact that you're asking this makes me think it's probably more than like five. I'm going to go with six wins. Exactly six and six. Yeah. Uh, so it'll predict, like, I think it has Indiana at five and two and six and eight, like 5.2 and 6.8 record. So it's just kind of mathematical. And then you round up. It has Illinois at exactly 6.0 and 6.0. I mean, I think it's I, certainly possible that that division. There are is... a couple games that I thought were losses early in the year that I think can definitely be wins now. So yeah, they're... the season's not lost. Imagine well, if they would have beat Indiana. <laughs> we'll talk about the power rankings here in a bit, but it's a pretty clear, there's a pretty clear dividing line between the top three schools in this conference and everybody else. <laughs> and I don't, I'm not saying that Illinois is fourth by any stretch of the imagination, but I think four through 14 are, I think Illinois could play four with about 12. Any of them. 12. Yeah. I guess it's only 12 now. It'll be 14 next year. Um, Two years from no, now. Whatever. Is no, that two years from no, now? I'm No, I'm saying the bottom two are the bottom two. Four through oh, 14. Well, okay. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the bottom two is bad. That's what you're saying. I get it. So it's How many one teams are in this three. conference anymore? It's one through three. Oh. Four through 12. Yeah. 35,000 layers of crap. <laughs> and then Northwestern and Nebraska. We'll talk about that in the power rankings. <laughs> um, all right. We'll just skip ahead. Chattanooga comes to Champaign Thursday night, 830 kickoff Eastern time. That'll be 730 in Champaign on Big Ten Network. Uh, Illinois should be obviously the favorite in that game. Hopefully they can come out with it and uh, get their third win of the season. Okay, so Illinois did not play in week three, uh, but just about everybody else in the Big Ten did. So we'll go over those scores here real quick. Uh, Ohio State annihilated uh, in-state rival Toledo, big time, 77 Did you see, I think Ohio State has only ever lost one game to a different school from Ohio. I think they're like 55 and one all time against other Ohio schools. It's pretty incredible. It's, <laughs> it, yeah. Uh, yeah. They destroyed Toledo. Uh, Michigan shut out UConn. Big win for them. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Nebraska Lost money on that on Michigan. The line was like 49 and a half. And I was like, they won't score 50. Even if they shut them out, they're oh, not going to score 50. All right. yeah, yeah. Well, Oklahoma went to Nebraska and beat them. Uh, Michigan State lost on the road yeah. at Washington. Uh, big win for Penn State. That was probably the biggest, I don't know, the most surprising outcome. But going to Auburn and winning 41-12, um, pretty, 
pretty sh- little little surprising there. Uh, Purdue lost at Syracuse. Indiana barely got by Western Kentucky. Rutgers beat Temple by a couple points. Uh, Minnesota big over Colorado. Wisconsin big over New Mexico State. And then the your beloved Iowa Hawkeyes um, shut out Nevada 27 to zero. But that's not the story from that game. Uh, that game had three rain delays and took around seven hours to complete from the time that it started, uh, or at least was supposed to start by the time that the game actually finished. It was an all day affair for those that were trying to watch the game. Uh, at... Yes, go ahead. Lost money on that one too. <laughs> You're not having a good run of this, are you? <laughs> I've seen your, Iowa, uh, Iowa your... was 23 point favorite. I didn't think they could even score 23 points. Well, they've scored more points in that game than they had all season. Yeah. Uh, oh, I guess there's a couple more. Uh, SMU uh, lost at Maryland. And then the one we already talked about, Southern Illinois, our beloved Salukis going to Northwestern. Oh, Southern the go. That's all, all the words, words we know. We know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, and then this week we talked about Chattanooga goes to Illinois, Maryland goes to Michigan, Central Michigan at Penn State, Minnesota at Michigan State, Indiana goes to Cincinnati, Iowa at Rutgers, Wisconsin at Ohio State, Miami, Ohio at Northwestern, and Florida Atlantic at Purdue. Uh, none of Boom. those games are very good. Maybe there could, Minnesota, there could be one. Minnesota at Michigan State is about the one that I see as well, Indiana, Cincinnati, maybe, but probably not. Um, yeah, ugly, ugly week in the Big Ten. All right, let's go on to power rankings. Um, I'll admit right now, and I don't know about you, I didn't have much much turnover here. Uh, I, cha- I, I swapped two teams. I didn't change much of anything on this. I had like three teams that changed. Um, so go ahead, you start. Give me 14 through 12. Exact same. Nebraska in shambles right now, 14. Uh, Northwestern. Uh, they lost to an FCS team, albeit it's the best FCS team in the world, uh, but they are still at number 13. Uh, <laughs> Iowa, they won by 27, but they did not look good. This They had a 44-yard touchdown run, a 50-yard touchdown run, and they only totaled like 330 yards against a bad Nevada team, so they didn't move. Illinois didn't play. They didn't move, and Indiana barely squeaked by Western Kentucky, so they didn't move. Okay. My bottom three didn't change. I kept Nebraska, Northwestern, and Illinois 14 through 12. Illinois not playing. I just kept them where they were. Um, I'm still higher on on Iowa than you are, but I did change my 11 through 9. That was the only changes that I made. I moved Purdue down. I know it was a road game at an FBS school, a Power 5 school in Syracuse, but I moved them down. They're in 11 right now. They only have one win on the season. Um, There's, as we've already talked about, 4 through 12 (laughs) – well, it's kind of a toss up. Um, so I left, I have Purdue there. I have Rutgers at 10. They haven't lost a game yet. They're three and zero on the season as is Indiana who I have at nine. <clears throat> so, and then the rest of it from every up from there up, I didn't change. Okay. Did you change anything? Yeah. I swapped two teams. Uh, okay. so what did I do? I did 14 through 10. Yeah. So nine Rutgers, they've been at nine for like three straight weeks or three and zero consistent. They do have a tough game this week or a tougher. I think they're uh, Iowa this week. Uh, so we'll see about them. Maryland three and zero again, it's been there for a long time. Um, I haven't moved them at all. Three and zero against uh, a not that tough of a schedule. And then I did move Purdue down. I had them in the top five at five. I moved them down to seven, uh, one and two Penn state game. They could, they could be three and zero. I mean, they easily could be three and zero. The Penn State game they blew because of bad play calling and bad clock management. And then this Saturday, Syracuse scored with like seven seconds left to win that game. So they could be three and zero. I still think they're a top half Big Ten team. So they're at seven. I wanted to move Michigan State down because they got embarrassed. Uh, the score the score does not indicate the game in Washington. They did not look competitive for the first half. I wanted to move them down, but I did not. They remained at six. Um, and then Wisconsin moves up two to number five. So basically I flip-flopped Wisconsin and Purdue at five and seven. It's okay. my only change of the week. Okay. Minnesota four, Penn State three, Michigan two, Iowa State one. Yeah. No, so my only Ohio changes... State one. I do. Why do I do that all the time? Ohio State, not Iowa State, is at one. Very different schools. Very different. Same um, amount of letters, though. 
<laughs> yes, they both have an O and an H. Um, yeah, I my only changes were nine through twelve. I have Iowa, Iowa does not have an H. I and an O. Excuse me. <laughs> I and an O. Um, all right, I have Iowa eight, Maryland seven, Wisconsin six, Michigan State five, Minnesota four, Penn State three, Michigan two, and Ohio State one. Only reason I moved Purdue down as far as they did, everybody else above them has at least two wins. And yeah. I just had a hard time justifying that. Yeah. So they're probably better than that. Um, but just based on their record alone right now, we are three weeks into the season. I know that they could be three and oh, but that's where we are. So also, that's where I left them there. I might just have a soft spot for Purdue because Derek Faber let me live at his house basically rent free for a year and a half. Yeah, that so. makes sense. That would do it. <laughs> that would do it. Yeah, I'd probably feel the same way. Um, he chimed in on my uh, Christmas comment. Did you see that the other day? I said there was only Christmas 102 comment. days or something till Christmas. Oh, no, I didn't I'm see stressed. that. Um, shout out Derek Favorite. Um, all right. Let's see where we want to go. Let's go to pick your picks. Um, I had a pretty good week again. Craig I did not. This. I'm yeah. so uh, bad Craig this. has been... <laughs> praising me for coming up with this idea but yet he's been pretty garbage at it so far uh last week i went oh, four and harsh. one craig went what nothing oh i went four and one craig went two and three uh that brings my record on the season so far up to a pretty solid 11 and five and craig is below 500 he's at seven and nine uh let i will go ahead and list off the games we're going to pick this week and then we will start with craig um, to give his first pick. So our games this week, uh, Clemson at Wake Forest. That's at noon on ABC. Duke at Kansas, a basketball matchup. Uh, Did you uh, see there was a movement to get game day there? I, I saw that, yes. I think that would have been great. I, I agree. I have another topic I want to talk about one day, but probably not today. Uh, yes, a matchup of basketball powers. Duke at Kansas, noon on FS1. Missouri goes to Auburn. That's at noon on ESPN. Florida at Tennessee. That's a big game. That's the 330 game on CBS. Notre Dame goes to North Carolina, 330 on ABC. Minnesota at Michigan State. We already talked about that, 330 on the Big Ten Network. Oregon at Washington State. Oregon now holds the belt, the Roosevelt belt. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, they will take that to Washington State, 4 o'clock on Fox. These are Eastern times, by the way, because, you know, most of our listeners are probably in the Central time zone, but we are not. Uh, Arkansas at Texas a and <laughs> 7 o'clock on ESPN. Iowa at Rutgers, 7 o'clock on FS1. And Wisconsin at Ohio State, 7.30 on ABC. So those are our games that we are picking this week. Craig, you get the first shot. Where are you going with it? I think those are clear and obvious. I think so as well. I tried to switch it this week. There were a couple games that were probably better, um, but I wanted to get some teams in here that we hadn't talked about. Well, I noticed you yet. didn't include the Illini. Yeah, playing FCS school. Okay. Well, so did so. Northwestern. Hey, <laughs> um, give me uh, Ohio State mm-hmm. over Wisconsin. Yep. The line Smart. there is 18. I don't know that it gets there. It might. I don't know that it gets there, but um, give me Ohio State to beat Wisconsin. Craig takes Ohio State. Okay. Um, all right. That was definitely the easy pick. Where do I go now? Um, this might be a little ballsy. This is the pick that I've had. That's listed. what I need from you because I need to catch you. <laughs> and it's only week three, four. Before. That's, I mean, the one you picked is really the only true one I feel super confident about. Why well, do you think I said that? Has a huge like that because I had the first pick. <laughs> this is the largest spread. Um, I'm gonna have some fun here. I'm gonna take Oregon over Washington State with my pick number two, or with the pick number two, my pick number one. Um, Oregon, I think they, they are better than what we've they seen a little really bit of this good. year. Yeah, they've looked they look good against BYU. Uh, pretty good BYU team too. So I know it's a road game. Uh, Washington State has already picked up a road win uh, against was that Wisconsin? Is that who Wisconsin, they beat? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm gonna take Oregon to win at Washington State. That You're was my that was my number oh, two pick great. as well. Okay. Yeah. So I'll take my number three. Give me Dabo on the road, Clemson to beat Wake Forest. Um, I know Wake Forest has their quarterback back, Sam Hartman, and it's at Wake Forest. 
but Clemson is Clemson. I, I think they're, they're still a better team. I like it. I like it. Um, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the Jayhawks. I'm going to take the Jayhawks oh. in the battle of basketball powers. Um, Kansas has looked pretty decent this year. Kansas uh, very good on offense against a lot Houston. from them as they get into the big 12 schedule. Um, but they've, they look better than they have in a really long time. So I'm going to take Kansas uh, hosting Duke with my second pick. This You're all into form. These are, those were my top four. Mine as well. Clearly. <laughs> um i have a five but i don't like it at all um it was a road team so i'm gonna take a home team oh. i've talked about them a couple times that i think they're a dark horse in the sec if there is such a thing when you got georgia and alabama i'm gonna take tennessee at home it's where game day's at tennessee 10 point favorites over florida um I don't know. I I have I'm high on Tennessee this year, so I think they can keep it rolling at home against um, Florida. I'm glad you took that because I didn't really want it. Um, if I'm being honest, I will now take. I'm gonna take a team that didn't particularly look very well, look very good, play very well um, on Saturday. Um. But I think they're the better team in this game, and they're playing at home. I'm going to take Auburn over oh. Missouri. Um, Penn State definitely got the better of them on Saturday, uh, but I think that's a pretty good Penn State team. So yeah. I will take – yeah, I'm going to take Auburn at home. Can we make a pact on this show to never pick Missouri to do anything good? Yes, 100%. Okay. 100%. I was kind of hoping that you wouldn't take them because that's why I put them on here, so we could just bash them. <laughs> I will never so. take Missouri. <laughs> Okay. Love it. Uh, you're up. all right. Okay. So I skipped over my five and I still don't think I want it. Sure. You do. Now that I'm looking at it, you can take um, them. They're better than that. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. Yes. Don't you? <laughs> I, I just, I can't. They're going to win the, they're going to win the division. You know, they are. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, okay. so in that case, Oh my God! It's between two, and they're both home teams, but they're both home underdogs. Um, give me the Carolina Blue. Give me the Tar Heels at home to beat Notre Dame. I know Notre Dame finally won a game this week. Uh, who did they beat? Who did they play? Uh, Cal. Yeah, the California barely, Bears barely beat Cal. This city might. Um, so actually burn I'm going to take ground. North Carolina. This team might actually burn to the ground if they start one and three. They, it may, they may actually do it. I mean, I, I haven't watched a ton of Notre Dame, but do they have a defense? Because North Carolina's offense, Drake May, is fantastic. I know. So it might be a 50. They might put up 45 themselves. So that means Notre Dame's going to have to score 45. Yeah. I don't think they can. No. Um, I, I like that. I was probably going to probably going to go. Carolina as well there um so but I didn't really want it so I'm glad you took it uh I'm gonna take the one you're you're staying away from I'm gonna take Iowa um okay. I know they've not been pretty uh and I think they Nothing have as good Iowa chance. is no well that's true um other than your occasional Casey's pizza but um I just I think they're better than what we've seen um Rutgers yeah Rutgers hasn't lost yet on the season um but I think I think I was going to show up. So I'm going to take the Hawkeyes with my fourth pick. Two games left. Minnesota, Michigan State, and Arkansas, Texas A&M. Craig, who are you taking? I watched a lot of that Texas A&M Miami game. Neither team looked great. Arkansas almost lost to Missouri State. We didn't talk about that. <laughs> that was real close. Minnesota hasn't played anybody yet. They're favored on the road at Michigan State. Michigan State looked terrible for two and a half, three quarters. It, uh, uh, I don't know what to do. Um, give me the home favorite. I'll take Texas A&M. Uh, yeah, I'll take Texas A&M to beat Arkansas. A little upset there. Craig takes Texas A&M. 
Okay. Um, that leaves me with Michigan State or Minnesota. Michigan State being the home game. Last I checked, I do believe Minnesota is the favorite. Yeah. Um, Michigan State has not been as good as we thought they would be. Minnesota has probably been a little bit better. Uh, Michigan State's coming off a tough road loss at Washington. Minnesota beat Colorado by a million. Um, Did you see Colorado's AD, Illini alum, Rick George? No. Came out with like a vote of confidence that wasn't really a vote of confidence. It was like, we hear all of your gripes about our football program. We are evaluating, but we currently support the staff. I'm like... Oh, good luck with that. Not exactly what you want to hear for the head coach. <sighs> no. Um. All right. I'm going to take Minnesota. <laughs> Sparty. I'm going to take Sparty. I'm taking Michigan State at home to bounce back, beat Minnesota. Minnesota is a two-point favorite last I looked. But I think Michigan State's probably the better team. If, if Michigan State's better than Minnesota, then it might it's possible that there's four teams in the East that are better than anybody in the West. We said that last week. Um, I know. But it, this game really could deter- could really go a long yeah. way in determining that. Uh, yeah. I will take Michigan State. Um, FPI had Minnesota or Wisconsin winning the West, both with like – I think one of them had a 40% chance. The other one had like a 35% chance. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't – it wouldn't shock me. All right, just to recap, Craig took Clemson over Wake Forest. He took Tennessee over Florida, North Carolina over Notre Dame, Texas A&M over Arkansas, and Ohio State over Wisconsin. I took Kansas over Duke, Auburn over Missouri, Michigan State over Minnesota, Oregon over Washington State, and Iowa over Rutgers. Best of luck to you. Um, this might be the week that you finally uh, make some ground and catch me again. Uh, uh, cause me I'm too. not super confident in anything that I just did. One anything more else? Football note. Yes. Herm Edwards. Herm Edwards out. Yeah. Arizona state. What's the better job? Arizona state or Nebraska? I mean, I pick Arizona state 24, seven, three, six, five. Cause I would never want to go to Lincoln, Nebraska. What's the better football coaching job though? Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, obviously, you'd want rather be in in Arizona than than I, anywhere in Nebraska. But I think I misspoke last week when we were talking about um, Urban Meyer and Nebraska. I thought I think I said Dan Patrick said Nebraska Urban Meyer to Nebraska, but Dan Patrick said Urban Meyer to Arizona State. Remember? Yeah, I remember. And pa- Paul Paps was like, "That's the last place Urban Meyer needs to go." <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate. <laughs> Yeah. Very accurate. Very accurate. Um, okay. We'll move over to – there's no really Illini hoop stuff to talk about this week that I'm aware of. Um, they did sell out the student tickets and all of like no, I, I three don't hours anything. or something. They did announce that. But um, oh yeah, basketball is not, not yeah. far away. I, heard a, I saw right. a lot of complaints about that because students couldn't get in. Um, all right. We're going to move on to the NFL. Crazy day in the NFL. Uh, <laughs> a lot happened. Uh, my fantasy team had a – well, one of my fantasy teams had a particularly poor day, um, and my backup quarterback is now out for the whole season. So, um, yeah, interesting day. There are two games to play tonight that we're obviously not going to worry about because this those games will be probably at halftime by the time the show even gets out. But um, it was an interesting week. The There were three huge – three games with huge comebacks. Um the Dolphins had the reemergence of Tua Tonga Bailoa, who I wasn't sure was ever really going to do much of anything, but he he was a monster for them um, coming back against the Ravens. Um, the Cardinals, what was the what did they come back on that one? What was the? It was twenty to nothing. Yeah, that was nuts. Um, twenty to nothing against the Raiders and came back. Did and you that see game. the? I think it was the two point conversion that Kyler. Um, had the ball in his hands for 21 seconds. Yeah. He dropped back and couldn't find anyone. And then he rolled right and escaped three tacklers. Couldn't find anyone. Then he came back to the pocket. Couldn't find anyone. Then he finally ran it in. I think it was a two point conversion. 21 seconds. CBS clocked in that he had the ball. 
he ran a total of 85 yards on the play. Yeah, nuts. Um, yeah, he's good. <laughs> it's also just <laughs> there's some bad football going on there. Um, oh, the and Cardinals then the Jets. are terrible. Yeah, no, they... Cardinals play calling offense is, is terrible. I have Kyler in one of my leagues, and at halftime, he had like one point. Yeah, he ended with like 25, but I'm like, the dude's a running quarterback, and he had zero rushing attempts midway through the third quarter. I'm like, what are you doing? Speaking of. How many fantasy teams is too many fantasy teams? Because I think I've hit it. <laughs> How many are you in? Five. That's about the number I was going to say. Uh, I think I'm five struggling. is probably uh, five is probably three, too many. I have three on Yahoo, one on ESPN, and one on Sleeper, which How makes it even Sleeper? more difficult. How is the Sleeper I lo- experience? Sleeper is my favorite. Sleeper is things. by far my favorite. I tried to get my guys in my Yahoo lead that I'm commissioned to, to go to Sleeper, and it's not going over. But um, it's different. There, Yahoo obviously does some stuff better. Um, I think Yahoo's been the go-to for a long time now. ESPN's getting better, um, but I like Sleeper. It's it's more app friendly. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yahoo and ESPN are more website friendly. I think. But yeah. sleeper is way more app friendly, and it's it's just I just like the look and feel of it better. They have more information, and uh, they color code positions, so the quarterbacks are like have the little green. I, I don't know. I like sleeper. I'm a very big sleeper guy. Yeah, I've never used it. I've heard good things, um, but yeah, I don't have a lot of experience using it yet. Um, no, my teams have one team's playing really well, one team's playing very poorly. So. Whatever. Uh, and then, yeah, the other, the third big comeback yesterday was the Jets uh, coming back uh, over the Browns. Um, just an interesting day in the NFL. And then there was the Trey mm-hmm. Lance injury. Um, mm-hmm. He's done. Uh, that looked terrible. Good thing, good thing they never got rid of Jimmy. Um, is now I was hoping the Cowboys would trade for him last well, week. <laughs> I think that was probably on the table. Uh, That's another thing. Cowboys is... won yesterday. Yeah. What a day. Um, and then, of course, last night, the the Bears, um, the Bears failed to do much at Green Bay, which isn't really surprising. Um, a lot of my Facebook and Twitter feeds were Bears fans complaining about the officiating, but I don't know if I can, you know. The only thing they did wrong was that touchdown. I mean, that was a touchdown they didn't give them. They still would have lost by a touchdown or 10. Not a big deal. You know. Did you see what Justin Fields said, though? I did see the Justin Fields comment. I think that's getting way overblown. It is. People are not going to see the context on that, the question that was asked and everything else. But yes, Justin Fields was did say something in the press post-game press conference about the fan, the Bears fans caring more about the game than the players do, something along those lines, which isn't exactly what it... The question that was asked was kind of, you know, what do you say about Bears fans that... I don't. Even, I don't even remember what the question was. But the point was, it wasn't the whole thing was out of context. It was just now it's just going to go viral, and Bears fans are going to be pissed off about Justin Fields, and it's it's unwarranted. So make sure you check into the context before you see players giving comments like that, because more often than not, it's not as bad as what it's being made out to be. Yep. Would you agree? As somebody who has spent years of his professional life working in the media. Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the way you answer a question, yeah, can definitely be. If you don't hear the question that was asked, then you're not hearing the complete thought process. So, yeah, I'm I'm on Justin Fields' side here. Although I've been on Justin Fields' side, I think he has the potential to be a very, very, very good NFL quarterback if they get some more pieces. But also... Cole Komet and Darnell Mooney are, I think they have four total targets, two catches through two games. And those are like their two best weapons. Yeah. They're just not getting in the ball. So not, not ideal. Yeah. Not yeah. ideal. Um, all right. Yeah. There was the two games tonight. We won't really worry about those because yeah, this will be out by those time those games are done. So um, major league baseball. Season is winding down. Um, Albert 
getting closer and closer to 700. I didn't think we'd see the day, but I believe he's at 698 now. Um, and there's still a couple weeks left to go in the season. So um, he could very likely hit. I want to see it so bad. That number. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I want to see, see it too. Left. I would love to be there for it. I haven't, I'm not planning to go. So I'm sure you probably will. 14 is, games left. What do they got left on their schedule? You go into a game? There, no. Um, West Coast swing, uh, three against the Padres starting tomorrow, and then three against the Dodgers over the weekend. You don't have anything to do, right? You can just follow the team. Yeah. Just right. plant yourself out in left field. Yeah. Just see what happens every game. Uh, two more against the Brewers midweek next week. And then they end the year with six straight against the Pirates. First three are in St. Louis, last three in Pittsburgh. See, one I've of those always is, to go to Pittsburgh. One of those is a Yadier Molina bobblehead game. All three, uh, I think, starting. What is they might have already had one of them. What is today? Ooh. Today is the ninth. I think they had. I think they already had one of them. They are making a bobblehead kind of like these uh bob gibson one and it's bob gibson and tim mccarver and they like fit together you know they're yeah. doing wayno pitching yadi or um albert in his stance and yadi is the catcher that they're cool. doing almost separate games so uh that i think the first one has started and then they're going to do the last three over whatever but yeah i think by the time that pittsburgh comes around he might already have it two more in 14 games i think that's totally doable Totally doable. Absolutely. I, I want to see it. I want to see him end on 700. I think that would be cool. No more, no less. Just no 700. more, no less. 700. <laughs> Easy number to remember. Of course. How many How many does Barry Bonds have? I don't remember. Exactly. <laughs> 700 would be <laughs> cut and dry. <laughs> uh, it's been, it's been the fun, best, even as a Cub fan watching this. Is he the best right-handed hitter ever? Probably. I mean, the other ones you got to compete with are Hank Aaron and A Rod, who he just passed. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, most of the legends were lefty. Babe Ruth was lefty. Ted Williams was lefty. Stan Musial was lefty. No, Stan Musial was switch. Stan Musial was switch hitter, but it's a question. Yeah. I think he's certainly in the discussion as the best righty ever. Um, Yeah. Aaron Judge now 59 home runs, too, for the year. He's chasing down a record. Yep. Um, as well, I think he gets there. I think he gets think to 62. He, I think he gets 62 as well. He is, I need him to hit about eight more because <laughs> I got beat in the semifinals. Now I'm in the third place game, so I just want to win my money back. <laughs> Where do you want to see him end up next year in a cardinal uniform? Uh, well, yeah, right. <laughs> There's already talk that the cardinals are going to have to rework Aaron Otto's deal to, if they want I'm, him not to opt out. I'm sure. Um, I kind of want him to stay with the Yankees. He might. I think that's just the – I think he needs to stay with the Yankees. I think it's where he's – Keep him out of the NL. <laughs> but yeah, stay with that's a good point. Good point. Uh, baseball season's winding down. Just a couple more weeks left. We'll kind of talk a little bit more about that as we get closer to the playoffs. But playoffs are pretty I'm gonna have to. I'm going to have to dig up point. our playoff predictions. Oh, boy. I don't want to see it. <laughs> um. All right. Nothing else sports-related that we need to talk about, is there? Is there anything else that we forgot about that you want to mention? No. No, I don't. I don't think so. There always is like the day after. I'm like, well, we didn't talk about that because um, we didn't talk about Albert breaking a Rod's record last week, and I saw it and I was like, gosh, dang it! But I I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure Excuse I me. was saving that for you as your. I was going to say something about that as my what caught my eye type thing, and mm. you didn't, and then they kind of forgot about it. So, um, all right, movies and TV, Big Brother. You uh, caught up. Text me. I believe the text was, "Is this the worst final five or final four ever?" Uh, and I said, you "Yeah, must be new here." Uh, um, not that it's been a particularly great final four, but I don't know that yeah. it's the worst ever. Maybe the worst since you've been watching. But there was one in there that, in particular, I remember being pretty bad. Um, yeah, I mean, no real shocks right now. Um, I mean, I think this is probably Taylor's game to lose at this point um she's playing really yeah i mean i think 
I don't know. I don't know what she'll do. I don't know who she'll end up taking if she gets to that if she gets to make that decision. But I think she's she shot up my list in terms of who's playing the best game. I think at this point, I mean, I think you can make an argument for Turner or Monty. I'm not going to make an argument for Brittany. Um, oh, I think Brittany has collapsed since Michael. Yeah, left. I, I she, think you can make an argument for the other three. She would have been gone the first four weeks if she wasn't paired with Michael. Yeah, no, Michael I carried agree. her. She's terrible. Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, not much left. Thursday live show and then a recap show on Friday and then the finale will be on Sunday. So um, that means the season is officially or the summer is officially coming to an end. And that That's sucks. True. <laughs> so are you picking Taylor to win? Um, <clears throat> At this point, yeah, I would say I'm picking Taylor to win. Um, I don't know that she's necessarily who I want to see win, but I don't know that I really feel that strongly towards any of them. Um, I've kind of been team Turner for most of the season, but I don't know. I don't know that I'm going to be heartbroken if he doesn't win. Um, Monty, I think has played a good game, but again, I don't, I don't really feel much of an attachment to him. Um, I, I would have picked at one point in the season, several weeks ago, I think I had, I think I kind of did a list in my head of like best chance, you know, who's the favorite to win at this point or whatever. I think I had Michael one and then I probably had Turner and Monty two and three and like Taylor four. I probably put Taylor ahead of, of both of them now at this point, but it's not far off. I don't think. How about you? I think all four of them are, none of them deserve to win. I don't think any of them have done anything. Well, okay. I I mean, I mean, if you're going with that argument, then Michael's the only person this season that's done anything, which right, is fair. Like, but I mean, I don't think that's totally fair. Taylor has Taylor's I mean, had to do a lot. Monty, Taylor had to I guess survive all of the block them. a lot. Um, she's had to play the right side of the house. I mean, Taylor's Taylor has done a lot to get herself there. Maybe it's just I I I don't want this to sound bad, so I might. Uh, I just don't like her personality. I think she's fake. She's kind of fake. I think I she's one hundred percent fake. That. So maybe that's rubbing off on my look outlook of her game. But I guess they all have won multiple HOHs, so that's something. I mean, no one won a veto because Michael won them all. So yeah, I think they're all similar. I think the those three are similar. Brittany has no chance. Whoever, if she makes it to the final two, no one's voting for Brittany. So. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a good good read on it, but I don't I don't like this final five. I get it. I get it. It's not, I don't it's... like the cast at all, really. Well, my pick to win it left like week three. Who was that? Uh, I think her name was Amira. The first she blind side the first from the leftovers. Blind side from the leftovers, yeah. I thought she was gonna win. But yeah. Yeah. I hasn't I been agree. a great season, in my opinion been a lot of controversy a lot of uh i think it's gameplay i think it's been more entertaining i i get the the controversy Mm -hmm. is its own thing um last season you had one alliance that ran the whole thing and there was no this season has at least it's been different there's been blind sides there's been um, I mean, Michael has dom- Michael dominated a lot of the game, sure. Um, and I- I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's the best season I've ever watched by any stretch of the imagination, because it's certainly not. Um, but I think it's been entertaining. I mean, I have found myself entertained by more of these episodes than I have by uh, episodes in a season probably in a while. Are you a live um, feeds person? Not really. Um, all I mean, I see some of the things on Twitter and stuff. I used to watch more of them, but um no not i'm not i don't sit there and just watch they're just hard to follow like yeah you know it's hard to just sit there and tune in and hope you to catch something fun i mean you might turn it like allison turned it on last night she type likes to do that sometimes after the show and they were just like playing bags like it's i mean it's they're in there for 24 straight hours it's not like yeah. they're talking game you know every waking hour so it's just kind of hard to follow it so yeah. no not really Meaning. And I, I even see especially less now less because anymore. there's only four of them. Yeah, like there's it, not much live feeds on. get boring. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I even see less and less of like the tweets and everything anymore. It's it's harder. I just yeah, 
I try to skip over it when I even see it. Just kind of, I kind of want to be surprised. I think, I think I muted hashtag BB22 because I think yeah. you spoiled something for me. And I was like, I'm just going to mute BB22 just to throw it out there. So like two um, seasons so... ago? Or this? 24, sorry. This is 24. Okay, I thought sorry. you meant like BB24. No, um, BB24. I um, spoiled something for you? I think so. Oh. I don't remember what it was, but uh, I think Monty or Turner win. If if Turner survives this week, uh, I think they beat Taylor. But that's just me. Yeah, no, it could be. It could very well be. Uh, it's all about jury management at this point. So, all um, right. Survivor and the Mass yes. Singer start Wednesday. Yes, I knew you were going to be excited. Survivor is coming yeah. up. Yes, Mass Singer as well. Um, Did you see the Mass Singer promo that they bring a goat on stage? They're really good. There's a goat on stage, and Ken Jong guesses, guesses Tom Brady. They're really going to play into that. Which makes me think that he's it's not, not Tom on the show. Brady. Yeah. <laughs> They're really going to play into that, though. Um, all right. I think we should probably shut it down. I did see a couple of movies this week. One of them is The Woman King. It's really good. Go see it. Uh, all right. That's going to be it. He's Craig. I'm Logan. This is No One Asked Us, episode 71. Uh, as always, give us a follow at No One Asked Us Pod. He's at Craig W. Choate. I'm at The Logan Lee. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Please subscribe. It would definitely go a long way to making me grow out mullet. Um, Yeah. We'll be back next week. Uh, That's going to do it for us. He's Craig. I'm Logan. Go Salukis. Go Dogs.